If you have plantar fasciitis, you probably know how incredibly painful walking barefoot can be. But could barefoot walking actually be good for your heel pain? A recent study indicates that it might be. Now the study had two different groups and one group did a four week walking program wearing shoes. The other group did a four week walking program barefoot. And at the end of four weeks, both groups improved but the barefoot walking group actually had greater improvements in pain, function, and quality of life. Now, you might wonder why that is, especially when it's incredibly painful to take those first few steps barefoot in the morning or to walk around on hardwood floors when you're barefoot. And the reason for that most likely has to do with your habitual walking pattern. Most people in the modern day world wear shoes most of the time. And so they get in the habit of heel striking and hitting the ground hard with their heel. Now this over time can contribute to heel pain, especially if you're doing longer walks or particularly if you're running. Now, when you get in the habit of walking like this, when you're barefoot and you don't have the cushioning of shoes, it hurts to hit on your heel. Now, if you're wearing shoes or orthotics that help comfort that, then it's just really a band-aid that doesn't fix your walking pattern, it just makes it less uncomfortable to do so. And that's good while you're wearing shoes or orthotics, but as soon as you take those off, if you're walking in that same heel strike pattern, it's really uncomfortable to hit your heel on a hard floor. And so in order to be able to walk more comfortably barefoot as well as in shoes, you have to fix the underlying walking pattern. Now conversely, when you walk barefoot for four weeks, it is uncomfortable at first, but you quickly learn that it's painful to hit on your heel, and so you change your walking pattern. And that means that you learn to walk differently when you're not in shoes, as well as when you are in shoes. And what that is, is hitting slightly more on the outside of your foot, a little bit more of a forefoot strike than a heel foot strike, so that you're using the arch of your foot to absorb shock, rather than all of that weight coming down hard on your heel. And to do that, you use the muscles in your foot as well as your arch to help control your shock absorption as you're loading weight over the foot. And then you push off using the big toe. Now, another issue with wearing shoes is that most of the time they have a toe box that comes together like this. That brings your big toe closer to your second toe where it can cause a bunion and it keeps you from posting out. Normally your big toe should be out fan shaped like this, so that it creates a post to prevent you from flattening down excessively. But when you're jammed in a shoe, particularly one with a narrow toe box, it presses your big toe in and doesn't allow you to have that post to stop pronation. So barefoot walking can be good to help you learn a new walking pattern and also to allow your big toe to splay out the way that it's normally supposed to go. So should you walk barefoot all the time? Well, probably not. We live in a world that has concrete. It's really hard. There are hazards such as broken glass or nails or other things that you could step on that could harm your feet. So most of the time, you probably do need to wear shoes. But the type of shoes that you wear is important. If it's good to walk barefoot, then ideally you want shoes that mimic that normal walking pattern. This is a shoe that I wear called the Ultra Torin. And this one you can see has sort of a fan-shaped forefoot. It's wider and it allows your big toe to post out so you're not jammed together. Additionally, the heel and the toe are at the same height. They call that a zero drop shoe where you don't have a downward angle like this. When you have a downward angle like that, you're basically always walking on your toes and your calves get stiff. So then when you go to walk barefoot the first step in the morning, you don't have that flexibility in your calves and it causes you to overpronate or flatten your foot down excessively. Now these aren't the only shoes like that. There are other shoes that do the same thing, but the key features you wanna look for is a zero drop and a wider toe box with a fan-shaped forefoot. I will put a link down in the description to these shoes if you're interested in these types. Now beyond walking barefoot and wearing the right kinds of shoes, what else can you do to help plantar fasciitis? Exercises definitely can help, but you want to make sure you're doing the right kind 
and the right technique. I've got plenty of other videos that show exercises for plantar fasciitis, and you can check those out in this playlist over here. But before you go, if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.